All right, so this is what's happening right now, right? So, uh, is your church closed? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, they're spread out. But we just watch it online right now. So, are they, which, where, where do you go First to First Baptist. So y'all don't have any service? Yeah, yeah, they're having two. But they're spread out, the seats are spread out. We have, we, at our my church, Central, we have the seats spread out. The fellowship hall, if you have a, if you're COVID worried about it, you can wear a mask. You don't have to time. worry about the music either. Don't have to worry about the no. a cappella. <laughs> Remember when Barney Fife sung a cappella? Yeah, I knew. It's just the last episode, in fact, last Friday. W was that the episode? Mm -hmm. He was singing a cappella. <laughs> and they disguised, they disguised his voice there. Hey, I got you a Dr. Uh, Diet That's Coke right. there. Do you drink Diet Coke? Mm -hmm. We drink mostly coffee, though, don't we? Yeah, we drink. Who's got the best coffee? Well, I miss our place. The the uh, the mill. The mill. Yeah, yeah, I like the mill. If you had to drink the coffee without knowing where it came, I'd from, you, I'd get a cup from McDonald's for a dollar. You know they've done better with their coffee. Mm -hmm. Their their coffee is rated. Consumers Report rates it number one. But and the Lassiter's is good. Mm -hmm. And the mill is good. What about Bond Bond Life? I hadn't been there in a long time. I hadn't either. It's since, probably good. Since this COVID. Probably all the same. Yeah. Starbucks is good. No, I hate Starbucks. What about Dunkin' Donuts? It's not Dunkin' Donuts anymore. It's just Dunkin'. Leave the donuts off. It's just hmm. Dunkin'. I wonder why they did that. Well, they did it about three months ago. And you ain't I caught didn't up even yet. notice. Yeah. So it's just Dunkin'? Dunkin'. Hmm. They changed all the signs? They're, they are changing. They hadn't changed them already. I had my, coming out of my bathroom Thursday morning, and I dropped my, I just, my phone just slipped out of my hand, and I hit my toe. What? Just the oh, one, on the phone. look at that. It just, it must have just went exactly like that. I mean, I can't even hardly move it. I guess I broke it. So, Tom, now you were just getting over COVID, right? Well, I got over COVID. I got up three weeks ago. I got, uh, what, did it, what was it? What was it? Uh, COVID fog? Not COVID fog. Brain fog. And I've had two MRIs since then. And I couldn't, I didn't know my social security number. I couldn't write signature. Now, how would they be able to determine if you had brain fog? Because you have brain fog. You just have it fogged. You just fogged up. You can't remember <laughs> anything. So when you say, tell me about your whole ordeal. About, you know, everybody's like, I'm not trying not to get it. I'm wearing a mask sometimes, and I try not to sneeze on people, and they don't sneeze well, on Well, we got diagnosed. So, so, so why did you even go get tested? We decided to go get tested because everybody was doing it, I guess, didn't we? Are we on? Are we're we, on TV. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. We're on yeah. you, We're on. Okay, the well, that's why we're, yeah. we're, we're yeah, just. Yeah, that's all right. Um, it seemed like it was a thing to do. And uh, we you mean we you did. just went with for went no went to the reason? health department, got tested. You, was you showing any symptoms? Not a bit in the world. Then why go? We were positive. But why go? Well, good question. I guess just to release relieve our minds. That, had you uh, have not gone, would you have known? And you nothing had would have happened. Nothing would have been different if we hadn't gone. But we went the second time, and we're still positive. Mm -hmm. Mostly curious to see if um, if we were negative. Uh, and then, of course, everybody in the community, you know, they, they feel funny if you're positive. They oh, yeah. don't get away from you, things yeah. like that. But uh, we we were both positive. We had been in quarantine for 14 days. Couldn't leave. Couldn't go out of the house. We had to have the groceries delivered. So uh, we, we were housebound. And uh, Sandra had uh, her loss of smell and taste, and we both had a headache a time or two, but we always have headaches, I didn't think a lot about that. So anyway, uh, the 14-day the quarantine was, was pretty rough, 
And then the state sent us a letter and said, we are released from quarantine, but we're still going to be tested negative. If we had another test, we had a third test. No, I said, yeah, we'd they we'd still be negative. Probably still, and may still be, I mean, positive. Still might be positive today. Mm -hmm. You just don't know. You don't know. Uh, but there's no reason to take a test. Uh, I think probably, you know, in Bradley County, you've got, what, 2,000, 3,000 tested, and you probably got 50,000 that would be positive if they were test tested. So I just don't understand the system that much, whether oh, yeah. the system is, uh, is accurate or not. Uh, but now this fog that, that I had was, was really serious because I had to go have two MRIs. And I had, let me tell you this funny thing. Now, did you, do you think this fog, this fog you said that's, that, that was real. You got it from yeah, COVID. Yeah, my doctor said. No it, BS. No, my doctor said that the, that the fog was a byproduct of, of the COVID-19. And a lot of people are seeing it. It goes away in two or three days. Mine didn't. Mine lasted probably 10 days to two weeks before it even started going away. But you'd be interested in the test I was given by the neurologist. I uh, had to draw a clock with 12, with, uh, 12 hands. I had to draw the hands then to show 10 after 11. I showed 20 till 11. Did, did you, were you thinking you were doing I, it right? I, I, I thought I was, but I wasn't. But those, those numbers, 11, somehow, a doctor told me later, get you sort of fouled up. Hmm. Uh, I couldn't text. I couldn't read a number. When you couldn't text, did I couldn't. You not... I couldn't read a number. I said, "What does an M look like?" By sending something with an M, what does a B look like? I couldn't do it. So then, in in the test I had, I had to draw what I thought was a refrigerator, it was a container, and I was supposed to duplicate the drawing of it, and I did pretty good on that. That's the only thing I passed. Uh -huh. And then uh, I was asked. Uh, to identify three animals. I missed one, but I got two of them right. A hippopotamus and a rhinoceros. I'm still not pronouncing yeah. words right, but a rhinoceros. Yeah. So they look alike anyway, so yeah. I missed those two. Uh, and then the tester gave me five words to mention twice in conversation. And then Somewhere in the conversation later on, I was to remember those five words. I didn't remember one. Didn't even try to really. I just, just couldn't do it. Looked like it was, it was effort I didn't I didn't need to do. Anyway, I, I miserably uh, failed the test. Uh, then that's where the uh, test for, I guess, nerves or if I had a stroke or something like that. I had the uh, MRI for my neck one for my head. The neck has been back. I've seen the results of it. The head hasn't been back yet, so I may still be a little you crazy seem, in the you head. You seem normal to me. Oh, uh, not really. Well, yeah. yeah, I guess to you I would be. Yeah, to you I would, to, to you I would yeah. be. But anyway, it was an experience. It was a fun experience. And, you know, a lot of people, and I wear a mask. If We wear a mask if we go to the grocery store. Uh, the whole time you're in there. Yeah, and I don't like it. It's See, I don't wear a mask at all. It's Except if I go into places that require that require. It. Well, the store is required, so that's why. And I guess I should, but I... We, we do that. But, you know, I see people wearing a mask driving a car alone, and I don't understand that either, why they do that. I don't know. I don't... But I guess to uh, err on safety... So they don't forget, maybe? Well, not forget to put it on or yeah. break the... Break the little band or something like that. You know, if I take NyQuil at night, if I've got a, if I can feel a little something coming on, I'll drink a little cup of NyQuil, and I get up in the morning and it's gone. But I'm a little fuzzy all day, so I, I you know, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I think it does make you fuzzy. I, yeah. I, I think uh, Tylenol PM yeah makes might you make you fuzzy to an extent. Yeah. But um, I'm not a doctor. You're not a doctor, so Did we don't know. Did you take any medicine for it at all? No. Because they didn't have any. There was none to take. You didn't there, take remdesivir? Or no, whatever. there was none to take at all. Uh, if you had a headache, they said take Tylenol. 
I'm a firm believer, unless you've got symptoms, unless there's some kind of dis-ease with you, you're better off not to go to the doctor because they're going to find something that you're not in the average range or, with. Or, or find something they need to run another test on. Another test, yeah. another test. Another. And all yeah. the time you're getting all this, uh, and, and, you know, the, everybody's, you know, they want to see if you're fitting that range. Of, I think everybody could be tested positive for something. I mean, I know some people that are slightly nervous. They've been slightly nervous. Well, I was nervous when I went it. through. I was nervous when I went through those tests. There's no way I could have passed those tests. No. If I'd been completely normal, yeah. I couldn't have done it. So I, I just don't know. I, I always go back to poor Richard's almanac when in the, there he's got a line, I've known more old drunks than I have old doctors. Yeah, that's good philosophy. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so I don't know if we can change any of this stuff that God's got planned anyway. I mean, if we go to the doctor or get physicals, get... I mean, did people... Well, this, this COVID thing, it seems like it, it's so extreme. Uh, you have some who die, some who have to be on a ventilator and live and come out of it okay. And then some who are positive, and everybody's positive at one time, and, and they may have a headache, then they may have nothing wrong at all with them. It's just so a crazy it, thing. And my doctor told me, said, we don't know enough about it. So in other words, the best thing to do is if you're out in public, Wear a mask. If you because, got a headache, take an aspirin yeah, or something and yeah. forget about it. Because it may not bother you, but it may bother the other person. So out of respect of humanity, wear a mask if you're in public. Now, one of the, uh, one church event I went as a special guest, uh, they were singing in a full choir. And I learned in conversation that when you sing, generates the, the, the virus to an extent, and, and they, they learned at this choir that I was in that you don't sing, don't sing, hmm. because it, it just increases the, I guess force. it just, just force or something. Yeah, force yeah. blows out to you, so I don't, I'm not a singer anyway, so. So I know people that have, that I really respect, that have known people that's had it, and they've been very sick, and I don't want to in any way disparage the importance. No, of, don't take away of, from it. Of, of it. Uh, so I don't it's know. It's better, better to, to, to err on safety than and yeah, to be sure. Yeah. And these schools that open up, that would be a tough decision. That can would you be imagine tough. If you, I mean, and you can decide whatever, but they've really got to take it upon themselves to come to a conclusion. That would be hard to do. And wearing a mask in school, I don't see that that's really conducive for learning. I mean, it's bound to be uncomfortable. It's got to be uncomfortable. And it draws attention to the nap, to the mask and draws attention away from education. Mm -hmm. So that's a hard decision it's to make. It's a hard decision. I, I just hate to make that decision. I would hate to make it. And whatever decision somebody makes, I've got to say, I respect their decision. Yes. That's and, all and, I can and say. And some people will be right, some will be long, wrong. wrong. Right. Like Mayor, Mayor Davis is, is uh, under Tennessee state law, or the governor's proclamation, a county mayor can mandate masks or not. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't, but he does urge, him, urge people to wear them. But he doesn't mandate it. Uh, mayor, And that doesn't mean that he doesn't believe in it. That's he true. He does, oh, I've been with him. I, I know he believes in it. I blow it, know he believes in it. Mayor Coppinger in Chattanooga or Hamilton County is different. And you forget sometimes if you drive into Hamilton County or go to a market or something, uh, you better have a mask on. In other words, if you hear a city official say, we're not mandating masks, it doesn't mean that they don't believe that Absolutely. you need a mask or they don't believe in it or they're Republican or whatever. Right. They're just saying civil liberties, but we'd rather you wear a mask. Yes. Prefer it for protection of, the, of our friends and our neighbors. Because we know people as well who as really got it, such as yeah. Tom Rowland, and he, he, he legitimately had it. So yes. that's, now they're coming out with a vaccine supposedly in November, right? Well, they're protecting vaccines in Russia and, and, and uh, China, and I don't know if I'd take one or not. You know, I don't know if it would be this. I'm often I wondering. did take a flu shot this past week. I always take a flu shot. My doctor recommended a, fruit, a flu shot. I always shot. take a flu shot. 
And I wasn't sure whether that would uh, cause make it worse. Complica compli com because nobody's, nobody's, because this is so new. Yeah, you don't know. Where do you think you got it? Well, I got it at a, I believe, at a church service mm -hmm. that I was visiting. Uh, because several in the con in the con see, I can't even get more words out. Well, I knew what you're saying. Well, what I was saying, yeah. several had it. Yeah. And two or three may have died from it. Hmm. So I, I feel like that's where I got it because I was exposed to all those people. But I'm not blaming them. No. Those, but uh, that's that's just where I believe I got it. Now you look good. Thank you, you. look just like you did 15 years ago. 20 years ago. 20 maybe. years yeah, ago. Maybe. Well, yeah. 15. Yeah. <laughs> okay, go to 15 then. Did you, um, you know, I remember the first time I rem remember Tom Rowan is I had gone to the, it was an election. That was when everybody went to the courthouse. Yes. And I was. Gave the Charlie, election returns. I was with Charlie McKenzie. And he Talked said. Talked to Charlie just last week. Did you? Mm -hmm. I me and Charlie's yeah. friends for years. But he said, jump in the truck and we'll go to Tom's. He don't remember this, I'm sure, to Tom's, uh, whether after you, a victory party or Well, something. I'll tell you what else he did, Charlie did. He had his old truck. Yep, and, his old truck. And I was... He's probably got the same truck. Yeah, and I think I was walking on North Akoi Street, and he pulled in to probably 8th Street and called me over and gave me a $5 donation. That was, that was like, big time back. That was a long time ago. And for Charlie, and that for was Charlie, like, that was Charlie, big. That and was I appreciated that so yeah. much. Most I appreciated his support. Yeah. Not just his money, but yeah. the support he had. And, and again, you know, sometimes I get uh, bad on my words, and I can't, I can't get one out. So That's right. excuse that. But Charlie McKenzie, if Charlie McKenzie gave you five dollars, that'd be like anybody else giving you fifty thousand. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Charlie's a good guy. He's a great guy. He's a good guy. But anyway, we was at the uh, the Swiss house. Yes. The Swiss yes. house. The was, Swiss house at the chalet. So that was that your first year? Oh, that, was, that was the first one, the first victory party. What did you do prior to that? In the radio. Radio, radio yeah. But uh, that, that was our first victory party. How old were you then? I don't know. 20, 30? Oh, probably 40 or 50. So you were radio before that? Yeah, a long time before that. Many years before that. For how long? So you didn't listen to the radio much? Huh? Not much. No, it was, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just didn't listen to it much. Of course, I was just Why, why not? Well, you were then. a kid. Yeah. But, but uh, why, well, so why not? So prior to that, what were you? A radio announcer? That's uh, it. Yeah, I owned a radio store. Like w, Steve I owned, Hartline. Well, I owned WCLE oh. and uh, proceeded Heartline on the on the morning show, basically. Yeah. Uh, radio was a lot different back there. You, you had to have somebody uh, at present at all times. Where right now, you know, Steve's letting it ride Im so, immobile. So then you had to be there. All had to be there all the, the time. If you left the thing, nothing. And, and the worst thing about the radio back in those days. If somebody didn't show in, you show up, you were the boss, you had to go to work. Or Sunday night, Sunday afternoon, yeah. Saturday night. Playing songs. Yeah, I had to play records. How did you know what uh, songs to play? Or did you, I mean, Well, you had, you had your, your, your records boxed up. Did you have to, like right here, you had to put them on the... Yeah, I had to put them on. You knew you pretty well selected in advance what you're going to play for two or three hours. Did you have to put the needle on? Had to put the needle on. Yeah, absolutely. And then you queued it up uh, by running the needle, running the record backwards till the noise quit. And then you... Then you and then, and then you back, back off and you knew it was ready to go. Did you have two record players? Had two. Like WKRP and Cincinnati? Yeah, uh, some, some had one, some had two, but we, had, we always had two. Why two? Because you, well, so you, you have one. one up. Yeah, because you're talking on the air, you're reading so you're commercials. Talking. You're reading commercials, and you've got to have one ready to go. So there, you, the one's playing, and one's queued up. Yeah, one's queued you're up, ready to go. You're giving an announcement. Mm -hmm. That one's playing. And then back one. in the old days, you had commercials that were called transcriptions that uh, had to be queued up, and sometimes they would keep the 
the transcription queued up on one turntable while you played records on the other one. These were the commercials, the way they went. Now, this was before taped commercials, even. Now, so you had to go. Now, between the time you're you got one queued up, one's playing, you're giving an announcement. Then do you go and get another? Record out of the yeah you know, yeah and you had your, you had and you, sometimes you had you had your live commercials and you had your recorded commercials and um, you might have to run four or five at a time on your tape player mm -hmm. and uh, we call it a cassette player and it got real modern at a time when you could stack them like you could 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 stack four commercial four records at the same time mm -hmm. or four commercials at the same time on the tape. And just turn them loose, and they just run right after the other. But uh, did you have to keep up with what the new um, hits were? Well, yeah. Also, at that time, uh, to be on the air, you had to be a third class, third class engineer, and had a license. That's not required anymore. You mean to be on the radio? You had to have a. Th you had to be a third class engineer. And, uh, yeah, you had to keep up with the hits, keep up with your records. How did you know the hits? Well, they pu send you pu lists. publications and, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, you had magazines and all. Could you play anything you wanted? I could. Like the like on that show, Old Brother, We're Far Out There, you had those people come in and sing in the can. You seen that movie? I've seen that movie. Yeah, you remember they came yeah. in and sing? Never did that. But you could have done that. Could have done it if I wanted yeah. to. I was the boss. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd play the top 40 hits or something, I guess. Yeah, keep it pretty well like that. Seems like that would be nerve-wracking. It was. Yeah. It was. Was, it, were, was your own Sundays, too? I wasn't, but uh, there was some. Usually Sunday, Saturday and Sunday, you had uh, religious programming and things a little bit different, and you had uh, regular, regular guys were off on Saturday and Sunday. I know there's one one fellow years ago. He's passed away now. Uh, he did obituaries on on radio on Saturday mm -hmm. afternoon, and at one time he would always say, "Here are the regrets." He called them regrets. Regrets. So one day uh, he didn't have any regrets, <laughs> and he said, "I just regret that we don't have any regrets today." <laughs> and so he sort of took that. Uh, on his own. So what about at night? Did you have somebody on at night? I had to have somebody on at night, yes. You couldn't just sign off at 12 o'clock with... Yeah, you signed... Well, we signed off at 12 o'clock, but you had to have somebody going till 12 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. So, But you didn't stay on... And so in the mornings, you got there what? Uh, 5 o'clock or something? 5 o'clock. You get up what time then? I'd get up at uh, 3.30 or 4, work on news stories, write, you had to write my own news. So you went... You had to go to bed at... Five. Well, uh, eight, maybe. Eight. That's always a good excuse not to do something at yeah. night you didn't want yeah. to. So the news, the radio was. If you look at WKRP. I watched that, that show. That was, that was, that it. was the way it went. That was, that was it. the way it went. Where was your, stu where was your studio at? We started out on Okoye Street uh, at uh, Hoskins Land Company. Which so is 30, now. 33 Okoye Street. Bill Brown's office Bill Brown. No. Oh. No, let's see. Well, Bill Brown's or was that, or was that Eddie Botts' building? No, that wasn't Eddie's building. He wasn't Richard Banks. No, uh, he wasn't. You're talking about on the corner. I was on the corner, okay. yeah. And then went upstairs to 27 Okoye Street. Not 27, 70-something Okoye mm -hmm. Street. Upstairs over the old National School of Business. Mm -hmm. And then we moved to... Uh, Did you have to have radio antennas there? Uh, How they do that? We had two-way radios for news. But I mean the radio antenna well, that reached everybody. Oh, no. we had Our transmitter was on out in the country. Not really out in the country. When you say transmitter, I'm Tra thinking transmitter antenna. Had, had the antenna, yeah. It's the a, transmitter think, had the antenna. You say transmitter, I'm thinking antenna. Yeah, well, antenna, transmitter all goes together. Uh, Weeks Road is where the most recent I one remember that for one. WCLE uh, transmitter. But... Uh, we had to, well, in, in later days, and, and we didn't have that to start with, we had to uh, 
transmit our signal, which was the modern way, to the transmitter mm -hmm. we, we, from, from the, the station. From yeah. the station. How, how did that? But go before through? we did that, we had to do it by the telephone line. And then, then, then on on WCLE AM years ago, the the power had to be low power before sundown. And then it's sun 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 up, sun down. It had to be low power. At sun up, the station had to increase could increase its power, and you did that with a couple of switches. The engineer had worked out. Boy, it sounds complicated. It was. It was. And then you, you you would forget to do it sometimes. Yeah. Then sometimes you'd cheat yeah. and, and raise the power when you weren't supposed to. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So there was a, there's more there was more to it then. A I lot guess. more to yeah. it, yes, yes. Yeah. A lot more to it. Um, everything's automated now. So it was more live then. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, and we were heavy on local news. Uh, we broke several national news stories. Uh, on the station. Uh, funny thing, Jack Hoskins and I, uh, Jack was at the station, and we had won a national news award, mm -hmm. and we were to go to Chicago and receive the award. And so we were flying up to Chicago and then going back that afternoon. So we were country boys, and we go to the, uh, to, to the hotel, Chicago, and we're looking around to see where we go. And we saw a lot of uh, teletype writers we thought was the radio station people. Mm -hmm. Well, it turned out it wasn't the radio people. We, we were involved in the, in, in the conversation, but it was uh, folks that were doing timeshares in Florida. And they were keeping it all up to date with a the, with the teletype. <laughs> so we quickly got out of there and went to the right place. <laughs> I don't know if I'd have told that. <laughs> well, that was yeah, that's all right. That was after that was after it's over with. Uh, but uh, a lot of uh, our national news, international news stories, we we broke uh, when Hank Snow uh, came for a concert during the Militia Gibson I remember event. That. Uh, we found out that he uh, was an abu abused child. Uh -huh. And so that made national news. And then by being at the right place at the right time, going by the police station and the dispatcher to find out what news was happening overnight, um, trying to think of the guy that the sheriff, uh, sheriff from Walking Tall, um. Pusser, Buford Pusser. Buford Pusser. Yeah, he got killed in a wreck, and I, I picked that up from the teletype from the police station, mm. and that, of course, made national news. What and town was he from? He was from West Tennessee. Or was it Middle Tennessee? No, it was West Tennessee. Walking Tall. Walking Tall. Uh, McNary County. I don't know McNary where County. that's at. Yeah, it's, it's way over in West Tennessee. It's like midway, not on yeah. I-75. Yeah, right no, there. no, not already on that. So, so the radio, how did you get to starting the radio station? Well, I mean, start, you don't accidentally open up a radio station. No, I started, actually I started on a 50,000 watt station in high school in Shreveport, Louisiana on KWKH, which uh, was the big station Is that time. where you were from, Louisiana? Well, I'll, I'll give you that history in just a minute. Okay. But um, it was a, the only thing you did at that station they they had the networks, just like the TV does today. Mm -hmm. And the only thing you do is make a live station break. And then they had, you probably don't remember the Louisiana Hayride, which Elvis Presley was on and several folks. I've seen it on video. Yes. And that was the station, that, that was the KWK station. And But my, I, I, I wasn't a native of Shreveport, but my daddy and my granddaddy, we're in the hotel business, resort hotel business. Mm -hmm. And so in growing up, I would uh, live about two years because my daddy would set up the hotel to the bookkeeping and all to the standards that my grandfather wanted. Uh -huh. So as a result, it would take about two years to do that. So I moved around a lot. 
in that period of time. I mean, I moved around a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Probably, I guess I could count 19 schools I went to. Her. So you weren't from anywhere? No, I was born in Florida. And born in a hotel, in fact. But, but, but you weren't rooted anywhere no, until no, you were? No, 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 no. Not until I got real, uh, sort of rooted in Bradley County. And how did that come about? Well, I uh, was working in Sweetwater, Tennessee, a station. You, how did you get to there? I went to there from Quitman, Georgia, owning a station in Quitman. You owned equipment? I owned a station equipment, a small, a small station that couldn't But how make. did you end up with that one? I want to go deep. Well, uh, working in Knoxville, a friend of mine who was in the radio business as well. Because you wanted we, to be in the radio we, business. We decided we wanted to buy a radio station. Mm -hmm. So we bought How old the, are you then? Oh, I was probably 30, maybe, less. But uh, we wanted to own a radio station. Mm -hmm. So we bought this little station. It hocked everything we had, mm -hmm. bought the station, and realized uh, two families couldn't make a living in that station. So I started looking around. I went to Sweetwater, Tennessee, and then uh, Carl Hoskins, who owned WCLE, ah. uh, gave me an offer to for about ten more dollars a week. But but you owned the station in Sweetwater? No, I didn't own that station. Oh, okay, just you just worked, worked there. there. Just worked there. And so you met Carl Hoskins. Mm -hmm. How did you meet him? He owned the station. And, ah. he, and and Carl, Carl's in the real estate. He business. was a big deal. Oh, he was a big deal. He was, a, and and when he. If he told you something, that's the way it was. That's what it was mm -hmm. going to be. Uh, yeah, Carl was solid as he could be. So he he offers his job at WCLA. Yeah, and then Jack Hoskins, who is Carl's nephew from Harlan, Kentucky, who got Loretta Lynn on on the air for the first time. She sung in his can. Yeah, his his can. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, that was his fame to claim to fame, and then. Uh, Jack became the general manager, and then he retired, and I became the general manager of the station before we bought it. Did he just say, oh, I want to sell this? Well, any, anything's, as you know, mm -hmm. anything's for sale at a price. Yeah. Uh, except so many times, you're, you don't want a price. You just want to do something for the yeah, yeah. community. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I do that. <laughs> uh, you but, there's some more of that brain fog. Yeah, yeah. but the, there's another intermediate guy who, who actually bought the station from the Hoskins. Uh -huh. And he made me the general manager to work at the station. And he was an absentee manager. He lived out of, out of state, in fact. And so this was the station, that the FM station that was uh, WQLS. It's now WUSY. This was, and in fact, I, I play, played the first country music song on uh, that FM station, which is now WSY, uh, before it was ever made. And nobody thought they thought, boy, FM, you're not going, you shouldn't play that on on a on a FM. You shouldn't, shouldn't play country on an FM station because FM was. Modern. And again, excuse me yeah. for getting. A FM flooded. was modern or pop. Well, yes, it was, it was uh, elevator music. And you FM? Just, yeah, you just never, background music, you just never heard of country music on on FM. See, all that confused me. When you say AM and FM, yeah. that is so far over my head, I can't even, I, it's just, I don't even know what that means. Well, I FM, mean, is, FM is, is frequency modulation. See, I, it's, it don't, means nothing. That don't mean anything to me either. I just can't. Not, not really. I, don't, I have no clue. Yeah. And then I, as uh well, at the station, I, I did news stories for the Knoxville News Sentinel and the Chattanooga at Times. WCLA. At WCLA. At WCLA. Because we were, we were making news stories, and it was just logical that, uh, that we would go on with them and, and uh, duplicate their news stories. Mm -hmm. So we did that. But then you finally bought the WCLA from the guy. Yeah. We bought it from... Uh, Jim, I can't even think of his last name, from Athens, Tennessee. And we, we bought it from him, and then they bought it from another owner mm -hmm. who bought it from Steve Hartline. Ah, I see. And he does have a nice studio right now. He does. It, really it, some of the paint's not too good. 
Yeah. Drives well, he uh, he's he's uh, he's got one of the nicest studios in Cleveland, Tennessee. <laughs> well, yeah, I can say that is. <laughs> I would design it a little bit differently, but yeah. But he. Uh, she didn't ask me. They did a good job, didn't they? They did. Yeah. It's nice. I mean, nice he does for him. a good job. Yeah. So uh, so you you finally retired and. After you, were you still on, did you still own WCLE when you became mayor? Or had you already sold it? Uh, had not sold it at the time, but uh, sold it right after that. Like six months or uh, five probably years? Probably two years. Yeah, probably two years. So did you run both? You were mayor? Well, and I did while I was mayor, yeah. So I, you still, getting... I still did a morning show while I was mayor for... So by then you'd sort of, you were a seasoned... Time to do one or the other. But you were a seasoned... Radio, you could handle both, of yeah. them, I guess. Now, when I first ran, ran for office, uh, my campaign slogan was, I'm in touch, mm -hmm. because being in the news business. I remember that. Yeah. That was a good slogan. That was a good slogan. Yeah. And so, and, and I was in you touch. You were. Mm -hmm. You won handily, if I remember. I did. And I don't know if you were contested. I had uh, two opponents at the first time. Yeah, but after you won, I don't believe you. Oh, I had an opponent or two a time. Sometimes I had no opponent, and other times I had one. It was almost irrelevant, though, right? I would think so, but I, mean, I certainly respect those people who sure. ran against me. Sure. They just made it It was nice. It, it, was, it, was, it was always a good feeling when you don't have an opponent. Uh, an opponent. But you, uh, you, were, you were a mayor for how long? Since 1991 to 2018. So... 28 years? 28 years. Mm -hmm. The mayor of one city for 28 years. And uh, at that, that point, I was the longest serving mayor in Tennessee, we thought. It turned out I was the second longest because uh, mayor of Alcoa, Tennessee, mm -hmm. had been there about 35 years. There may have been a time where his service was interrupted and and I would be the longest serving in the state, but but anyway, and I was uh, elected president of the Tennessee Municipal League mm -hmm. on two occasions, and mayor of the year mm -hmm. on, on one occasion, and served on the executive committee and the board of directors for several years. I enjoyed very much. It put me in touch of our competition and uh, put me in touch, uh, put us in touch of. Uh, what things were going on during the state of Tennessee? Are you a radio? Are you a radio guy or a mayor? I'm a mayor right now. I I'm, mean, I'm if, a, in your mind, which one are you? Uh, mayor, yeah, mayor. I'll have to say I don't know of anybody, not one person, not one single person, that does not think everything of Tom Rowan. So and what? I'm being they, serious. So what do they think? That that <laughs> that that you're just the best mayor we've ever had. And somebody said the best money can buy. Now that's, that may be. Cartwright may yeah. have said that, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's. Uh... But I know, George, when, when, uh, when I ran for mayor, I had some goals that I, that I set. Mm -hmm. And they, they've all been realized except one. And that was Amtrak Rail Service. Mm -hmm. And I did uh, become the, uh, co-chair of the Amtrak initiative mm -hmm. for, for the U.S., along with the mayor of, uh, he was in Virginia, no, uh, Mo anyway, he's, he's, a, he's the mayor of, of a town in Virginia. And uh, so we, 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 we went on the road, so to speak. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. And we had, uh, one thing that we did accomplish from, from Amtrak or the National Rail Service was the fact that if a new rail service was to be built, it would be through East Tennessee. But the problem we had, even with Congress allocating more money for mails, rail service, uh, equipment was so old, they'd had, they had to eat that up by buying new equipment, mm -hmm. so we couldn't get the new service going. But we did accomplish that much, that if there was a new rail line, that it would go through Washington, D.C., Upper East Tennessee, Lower East Tennessee, 
and down to Atlanta. Now, when you say a new railroad, you mean uh, establish were, a new line because were they going to run on top of the existing? No, they railroad? would. Yeah, they have the uh, Amtrak uses the same uh, using existing railroad tracks. See, see, that's way over my head. They too. use existing I mean, tracks. The, the, I mean, we have railroad come through Cleveland. Yes, it would. It would come right through but the why, but Norfolk Southern. But the railroad Southern. does too. So what's the difference? Well, it would be the same track. So what's Not the point? Not at the same time. Well, so now you got passenger service. Well, can't this railroad have passenger service? Well, they can have passenger service, but you, you got competition because of, of, a passenger train <clears throat> can go five miles an hour faster than a freight train. Because of and the then, weight, And then they make money with their, with their, you see the cars, how many cars you have yeah. on a freight train. And uh, and they can't do both. Well, they I can guess. They can do both. It's, it, there's... Have you ever heard of the combination on the Wabash Cannonball? That's an no. old Roy Acuff song, and uh, it's a it's a I combination, a combination railroad, a combination with passenger cars and freight cars. Weren't they always like that? No, but oh. that's out of the picture now. They don't do that anymore. So you're saying Amtrak would bring just passengers? Just passengers. Just in a railroad car. And mail, car. probably mail. Now, now, why is that not a great idea? I think it's an excellent idea. It's a great idea. I mean, so what's the holdup? The holdup is money. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, Sandra and I went to uh, Washington, D.C., to New York City uh, with Mayor Giuliani uh, during past, just after 9-11. Who was a good mayor, too? He was a good mayor, still a good guy. Yeah. So going on the train at Union Station in Washington to... Pennsylvania Station in New York City mm -hmm. was actually quicker than flying. Mm -hmm. The time you go through the airport sure, and all that yeah. stuff. I mean, it was... How it, fast it, does it go? Well, probably they'll go 80 to 90 miles an hour. That's, pretty, that's fast that, that's enough. Fast, that, that, that's, and that's a, that's a railroad uh, car that's in good shape, a train that's in good shape. And that's fast enough. And then, then, then the speed also uh, dictates... Your, your rail service on what kind of rails you've got. Uh, you've got A rails, B rails, and, a, and an A rail would be a main line that you can, you can open it up. Now, now, what's the point of people being able to ride on the railroad? I mean, uh, I guess if I was going to go to Chicago this weekend, I could get on the Amtrak at Chattanooga and they can drive me straight there, and it has two stops. And I guess well, it would have more than two stops. It it would probably stop at every any station. That anybody that could buy two tickets, they'd stop at it. But it's it it it's, it doesn't slow you down really. But, but logistically, on. you would logistically have it. it's better than flying. Yeah, and you could make it better mm -hmm. if everybody that was riding it was agreeable to ride thirty miles. You know, I mean, you wouldn't have to stop between here. You could say Chattanooga to Knoxville to Chicago. Or something. Well, when uh, I had a, a part in, in bringing Red Clay about as a state park, and I had proposed to the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum to, write, to run a line from Red Clay up to Cleveland, the Cleveland Depot, for tourist purposes. Mm -hmm. And they agreed to that. At the, at the time, but we, we couldn't get the rail, the passenger service wouldn't open it, wouldn't open it up to let them do it, let us do it, because that's where they make their money. And they're not going to have somebody stop and let a passenger train, little excursion yeah. train, uh, go through. But I thought that'd be an excellent idea sure, for yeah. tourism. Now, when you say Red Clay State Park, I always remember it. See, I don't remember. I remember the Nilly Bipper was there. Nilly Bipper Art Show was there for years. Yeah, uh, I had I had some good times at, at Red Clay. I was chairman of the Red Clay Association. What, what year was that? Because I remember the it was Nilly the 1970s. Uh, Ray Blanton was was governor for the. What was it prior to that? It was just a park. Well, who who well who? well, the Burger Beer Company wanted to buy a brewery or, or manufacture a brewery, a, a brewery uh, because of the fresh water mm -hmm. that was at the park. Uh, Colonel James, James Corn uh, wanted it to be preserved as a, as a park. 
someday. So he bought the property and preserved it so they couldn't, so the beer company couldn't. Out of his own? At his own, but he did, he did recover it. He did sell it to the state at no profit, but he sold it at what? So, what so when the Nilly Vipper was there, did Colonel Corn own it? I would, I would think Colonel Corn probably, I think it's probably already gone to the park, to state property at that time. At that time. Mm -hmm. But we had uh, at our, at our kickoff, I guess you'd call it, the grand opening. Which was when? Well, Governor Blanton was Blanton for the, was the governor for the groundbreaking. Governor Alexander was governor for the, actually, dedication of the park. But... At one time, while the park was being developed, uh, a fellow named Gary Lawson, who was our first park ranger, lived in Polk County, he was a park ranger, and he was sort of looking at the development of the park. Uh, super, he's super. So, uh, when it while it was state state owned it at that time, but he called me one day and asked me, could I go to the airport? and pick up the chief, the Western Band chief, mm -hmm. who at that time was chairman of uh, Phillips Petroleum Company. And he said, I can't go because the Eastern Band chief is there, and uh, I, I just want him to meet, meet each other. Mm -hmm. They didn't get along at all. Uh, so anyway, I, I went what, to... What did he look like? I don't remember. He's he's. I mean, he didn't have feathers. No, no. He didn't. It was just like. No, that's another story yeah, on the feathers. Yeah. <clears throat> but I went to the airport and I said, "Chief, uh, I welcome." I introduced myself to everybody. And I said, "Glad you're here." I said the uh, Eastern Band Chief, Chief Chief uh, Bushyhead, is here, and he'll be glad to see you. I said, "Well, we'll just come back another time." They got in the plane and left. God, they were that. that, that oh, that's yeah. Bad blood. They were bad, very bad blood. Uh, because of the Trail of Tears, uh, the Eastern Band, you know, evolved over in North Carolina, Western North Carolina, mm -hmm. and some of them are called uh, drug store Indians because they would pose for pictures and all like yeah. that. I've all had right. that pit pose. I've got. Yeah, I know you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, they 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 get along fine now. They we we burn the bridges and uh, they. Uh, did the eternal flame and dedicated yeah, burning right now. Yeah. Didn't burn for a while because yeah. it'd go out, but yeah. gas company finally got yeah. it going okay. <laughs> but on the stage, Chief Iron Eyes Cody. When you say the stage. On the stage, to, not the stage coach, but the stage where we were staging the celebration. When it was opening? When it was opening. And everybody came out of the woodwork. Everybody wanted to be a part of the celebration. Mm -hmm. So Chief Iron Eyes Cody, he's the one that the Keep America Beautiful picture uh, depicts of the Indian looking over uh, the landfill yeah. and has a tear in his eye. Yeah, he was Italian, I believe. He was Italian. He yeah. wasn't real Indian. Yeah. You've learned your history. I've learned my history. But he presented each, each uh, chief which at that time it evolved into Chief Mankiller, who was the chief for the Western Band, Chief Wilma Mankiller, and the chief of the uh, Eastern Band was still Chief Bushyhead, but a different Bushyhead. And they said, we have a, a head uh, feathers mm -hmm. to, to present to each chief. Mm -hmm. And one of the chiefs spoke up and said, well, that's a nice suggestion, nice offer, but uh, the Cherokees didn't wear feathers like that. So that was that was an embarrassing thing as, as well. <laughs> How too. did they wear them? Well, they didn't wear feathers. They, they just uh, they just didn't wear those big feather headdress. Now, I've watched a little bit about the Indians, and, and my understanding is Cherokee weren't the first ones here. It was the, the Utes or something like that. Yeah, I think they, they, I think they were actually originally, it may not have been na Native Americans, they may have come from Germany or somewhere. What, what was that? Uh, the Cherokee supposedly ran out this other tribe. Well, they ran out a lot of, my, my background has a little Choctaw in it, and Choctaw yeah. and Cherokee didn't get along at all. Yeah. They didn't get along. At, at one time, during the development of Red Clay State Park, uh, you didn't even mention anything about being Choctaw. 
not around the Cherokees. Hmm. Racism is the same thing where evidently everybody it is. just it pops just up happens. everywhere. Pops up everywhere, mm -hmm. no matter what it is. But I guess there's, there there are probably just a very few tribes of Indians who really got along. Now there's one tribe out west that they they never did get them out. I don't know what tribe that is, but they never did leave. Well, the Pueblos, they, they, they were the mountain dwellers, you know. I think that might have been the one. They I think never that did was them. Away. They just stayed in their place all but the time. But you know what we've done to the Indians and moved them out? That's as bad as anything can get, isn't it? It is. And, and when they discovered gold in their land, yeah. they would move them on, you know. Yeah. Uh, another interesting thing I've, uh, happened when the equipment started to move in to actually make the land, uh, build the, the buildings on the land. Now, when you talk about, is that in in Rott's time? Have you, you ever read that book? Mr. Rott? Yeah. Yeah, I've read that book. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's when you're talking about, 19... No, I'm talking about in the 70s. Okay. When we were building Red Clay State, oh, okay. State Park. Yeah. And you're going to confuse me. Don't forget well, what I'm I talking the, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Dumb and dumb. Anyway, uh, a friend of mine was on the state uh, historic commission, uh -huh. and she was a lady. And we were at the park as they were getting ready to design the the houses, uh, replicas of the of the villages. And there was one house that had three walls. That was an original Cherokee house. Cherokees didn't live in teepees; they they lived in houses. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the the chief van ha van house van house is, yeah. is is a mansion. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I, t I told her it's Barbara Irvin was 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 the fellow was the lady, and she was from Bradley County. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, there's some rocks here that uh, were actually placed by the Cherokee because it hadn't been removed, they're the foundations for the house. Yeah. And I said, uh, that'd be a good souvenir to have. So we didn't have cell phones, so she went somewhere and called Nashville and came back and, and the ranger said, well, we were instructed to just bulldoze everything down, but we can have those rocks if you want them. So the rocks that she had, uh, the rocks that we found, she had the ranger deliver half to me and half to her. Mm -hmm. And I have them at a hidden place now, <laughs> but a prominent place. <laughs> and and uh, I had these rocks, and I went to the Hermitage, mm -hmm. and President Jackson was was well, because he, he wasn't selling it, but the Hermitage was selling scrib, uh, sprigs of sprigs of ivy, mm -hmm. two for 50 cents in a little uh -huh. box. And I thought I was going to grow some over my rocks. Yeah, yeah. So I bought uh, bought my, my ivy, and I put it over the rock, over the rocks, some of the rocks. And nothing happened. It, just, it was just dormant. It mm -hmm. didn't die. didn't grow. Uh -huh. And Colonel Corn said, it's not going to do anything because you're, you're, hitting, you're, you're pushing the, the good and oh the bad my goodness. with President Jackson and the yeah. Cherokee Indian. And the rocks representing the Cherokee and President Jackson representing the ivy. He says, take your ivy and reset it out. It'll grow. And I did, and it did. I've got it all over the place. Was he serious? Yes, he was serious. It, did, it didn't grow. The two me, little sprigs just lay there. Now, that Colonel Corn, was he? Colonel Corn was, was former mayor of Cleveland. He was a city judge. He was an historian. He owned the chalet. He's the one Eddie Carr out worked for. Yes. Right? Early on. Yes. And, and his son, Donna, Z Donna Zavale. And yeah. And he, he was just such a good guy. Yeah, Eddie says he's a good He was guy. real good. Yeah. And in fact, uh, the the chairman of the board of, of the petroleum company who 
didn't get along with the, with the Indians at all, didn't get along with his fellow Indians, uh, was indicted on a federal charge, uh, and, the, and the charge was uh, something to do with uh, campaign donations with uh, one of our presidents. Mm -hmm. And Colonel Corn had a way with words. And so he sent a letter, and I, got a, I have a copy of it, and the letter says, uh, I couldn't think of anybody nicer to be indicted than you. <laughs> and then and speaking of words, after we dedicated Red Clay, Eddie Cartwright was county executive. And I received a telegram from President Reagan I had a, had a friend in the White House that I could get these little telegrams from, so I received a telegram to congratulate everybody on coming together, the Eastern Band and the, chair, and the Western Band. Mm -hmm. So um, in the telegram, it said, congratulations on your, get what the word was, on the powwow. Congratulations on your powwow at Red Clay, Tennessee. Uh -huh. And very quickly, and I had Eddie Cartwright. I said, Eddie, you're the you're the mayor. You're the county executive. Read the letter. Read, you can read the yeah. letter on stage. And the Cherokee is saying, we don't call them powwows. And we'd rather just say something else. So I just had Eddie uh, word it to we're having a meeting uh -huh. or a concave. So anyway. The Associated Press picked up the story, and it said something to the effect that uh, cowboy and Indian movie actor <coughs> still living in the old days of powwows and cowboys yeah. and Indians. Well, that's what I would have called it. And that uh, that record, the the telegram, the copy of that telegram is at the Red Clay State Park at the museum today. <coughs> It's, and it says uh, pow uh, powwow. Instead of meeting. And who wrote the letter? Uh, President Reagan, or somebody wrote it for him, of course. It, yeah. was, it was a telegram. Yeah. And it said powwow. It said powwow. And yeah. I'm going to sip some water. Yeah, have the Diet Coke. No, there. that's good enough. We don't want, we want uh, some water? That's good. It's got it. Here's just some water. No, I've drunk out of that. Drink a Diet Coke. Anyway, there's a lot of interesting things on Red Clay because. I'll charge uh, you. Oh, thank you. So, now what? What year was it dedicated? Do you remember? I'm thinking it was 79. So probably. the Nilly Bipper, they were having the Nilly Yeah, they had Bipper events party. every year, Nilly Bipper Art Show. It went on for several several I years. See, I went there every year with my grandmother, Laverne. She had to she'd sell her art. Mm -hmm. You'd walk through the... And at that time, it was actually, if I'm not mistaken, it was actually across the road. And you'd walk through the woods. Am I wrong? Well, or? probably because she was selling her yeah, products. They had, this they had to be across the the roadway because I don't think anything is supposed to be sold on the well, park. Well, the park itself. Was selling it. it was all like a flea market. Yeah, but it's, it, it's, it's probably across, across the, road. the road. Which was gravel. Now. Which was gravel at the time. And I remember there was a band there and they were playing the latest songs that were out, which was the Eagles. And why I remember that, I have no because idea. Because you like the Eagles. I just, it was just significant. I don't know. There, there is a, a grave near Red Clay, right, right outside the border, that uh, is the grave of Sleeping Rabbit, an Indian. And making several trips to University of Tennessee and Department of Conservation of the state, to actually prove that this was the last uh, last Eastern capital of the Cherokee Nation, that that was a hard thing to prove. Uh, they weren't buying into it. Oh, you mean you couldn't just say? No, you yeah. couldn't couldn't say it. So we went to the Department of Conservation in Nashville, and Governor Dunn, Winfield Dunn, was the governor at the time, and he came across, and the people from the University of Tennessee, we mentioned Sleeping Rabbit, and they had a a map and had a, a a drawing of Sleeping, Ra Sleeping Rabbit where he was buried. They said, well, according to what we, we learned, 
that Sleeping Rabbit was buried just right outside the perimeter of red clay. So that tells us that that's the place. Of, but, of the last council ground. Yes, but it, it, we understand later that Sleeping Rabbit wasn't even buried there. <laughs> but, but anyway, it makes a good story. But that is the last council ground. Right. The last council ground of the eastern band, last eastern capital. Eastern. Yeah. Now, the the capital house itself, uh, where they they did their business, their government business, all the sides were open so everybody could hear what was going on. So they decided. That was the first uh, non sunshine law we had. Now they decided at that meeting, powwow, as they mm -hmm. it, to give in. No, to agree. That that, that, that that was the last eastern capital. They just wanted some extra proof, and that came about. But I mean, I mean, the, the Indians when they met there and had the meeting. Well, they agreed to what? When they had their business meeting, their government meetings. But they agreed all of their meetings. Yeah, all their government that was meetings. Like the Church of God tab. Well, it was like more like the city council or city, county yeah. commission meeting. Uh, but they they had to have open walls so everybody yeah. could hear. What was going on? That, yeah, was, a, fact, that, that was a sunshine law. Yeah. Even they were doing that. Yeah. But now, some of the uh, some of the Indians who came from Tahlequah, Oklahoma, the third generation, maybe fourth generation back, they said if uh, and, and they, many of them told us this, and they they would stand on the property, especially where the Spring was, and they would say, we can visualize where the soldiers were gathering up to remove the, the Indians because gold was discovered, uh, but we could, from, from our forefathers, we knew where every rock and ridge was, and we could pretty well tell you while we were on the ridges and the rocks that that's where they were, that that Everybody passed it down, uh, yeah. generation. And then uh, at uh, Flint Springs, there's a, a song, Home Sweet Home. And there's a marker in there that it was written by Thomas. I can't think of his name right now. It's on the marker. But he... Uh, Is that the school? Well, it's near the school, the old school. But it's, it's where you make the little... Old, the old highway comes in, comes back out. Yeah. The marker's there. But he was held prisoner illegally by the state militia uh, because uh, he was in Tennessee, but he was held by the uh, state of Georgia. They didn't extradite him. They just catered him on back. So anyway, he had time to write the song Home Sweet Home, and that's where that song was written. And it, there's, the there's an, Well, I don't either, but there's an historical marker that, uh, that tells that whole story. Now... now did you have a big interest in Indians and red clay, or was it just the thing to do? Uh, Chamber of Commerce had a committee called the Red Clay Committee, subcommittee. And I'd heard about it. And so it seems like they would put anybody on that committee just to fill a... I think M.C. Hedrick may have been chairman at that time of the chamber. He said, "You want to be president? Of, uh, you want to be chairman of the Red Clay Committee?" Yeah, I guess so. What does it mean? So then we started learning about it, and Colonel Corn uh, told me that there are a lot of rich people on Lookout Mountain that on, that had the Red Clay Cherokee Association that didn't do anything about it. That I'm going to take all the, the the paperwork, make you chairman, made Sandra. Treasurer, I believe, and, and had all the offices going in there and, and just take it over because I think you'll do something about it. So that's where I got the interest in. We started, we, we, it was a long fight. Red Clay State Park, I don't know how much it visits in Kentucky. It's, it's, it, at one time, it's the most visited state park or historical area in the state of Tennessee and one of the most visited in the nation. Now, when, when, the park first was visualized. I had I had grandeur thoughts of let's put uh, restaurants in there, let's make it a you know like a state park is yeah. sometimes. Maybe put in some rides. Yeah. And and but I found out quickly it was a historic area. 
And I believe that was the right call, don't you? Oh, absolutely. Well, it had to be. Yeah. Uh, for the for state law, but it was it was interesting because there was so many people fighting us. But you did this for not for Cleveland or Bradley County. You just. Well, I, I was I was challenged. I was I was put on that committee for the Chamber of Commerce as the and, mayor. No, I wasn't mayor at the time. Oh, you weren't mayor. No, I was just. Oh, this is even prior to that. Yeah, this is prior to that. I thought this was you were talking about. No, 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 no. Oh, oh red clay all took oh. place after that. But it was uh, it was interesting. It, was, it got more interesting as 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 the day went on. We can go down there right now today, and it'll be there'll be people there and having a picnic, and the bathrooms are clean, and the air conditions on, and the grass is mowed. Yeah, and they have. Um, a new uh, at the visitor center. They have a new video. I've watched the video. Made. I had not watched the new one. Well, the new one's a little quicker than the than the old one. And it's amazing how people just you know you'll find uh, ten, twelve people all the time. They're oh, yeah, ready, ready that. to uh, to watch the video. It's real cool. And, and all of the the ar artifacts that uh, were donated. I mean, they came out of the woodwork. Everybody, I've got in yeah, all that stuff like that. Arrowheads. And uh, Bobby Taylor at Merchants Bank uh, used one of his vaults that we donated, put everything in that was donated, and then of course later it was it was all sorted sorted out on what was necessary and what wasn't necessary. But but this that didn't that interest me. That's prior to being the mayor. Yes, I was just a, a person on the Chamber of Commerce committee. As mayor, what was your biggest accomplishment? Probably the General Aviation Airport. That was one of my goals. And and I would say that would be a real big accomplishment, obviously. And uh, probably that, the hardest. That was the hardest, absolutely the hardest. Nobody realized uh, the difference between uh, general aviation and commercial aviation. If you was to tell me how hard it was, I wouldn't believe it. It was it was very hard. Uh, on one occasion, Steve Wright and uh, Jerry Bahannon, the chamber, we went to a community meeting, invited to come to, and we were almost ambushed. Uh, it, it was the the site the airport's in now wasn't the site that was suggested at one time. And I mean, it was, I thought we was going to get hug wound. It was terrible. They were just uh, up and against, against it like everything. In fact, we had to have a deputy sheriff what take, a, take it, our car out. Conspiracy or what? No, this thought, well, it, it's going to take farmland and all that, you know. Uh, it'll take good, we don't want an airport. In our backyard, and you know, you got one of the nicest subdivisions yeah. anywhere, right in the backyard. Yeah. It doesn't bother anybody nice, that way. As nice a house as anywhere. Yes, very nice, and more coming up, more yeah. coming up. And I watched a video that the Tennessee Aeronautics Commission made of cows. Planes would be flying low over where cows were grazing and the cows would never look up. It didn't bother them. But when a train went by, they'd look up huh. at that train. I guess they had more vibration I mean, there. Know, but if you're going to eat them, why do you care how they're looking? It don't matter how they're, what they're yeah. thinking about, do you? Yeah. But that, that was a, it, it was the airport, is it envisioned to have the restaurants around it or is it? No. It's general aviation. It's it's people who who do be, in, industry people. Uh, for one one of the now why can't I go over there and get on Delta? Obviously the runway's not big, right? The runway's big enough. Yeah, the runway's big. We we have Delta uh, charter jets all the time. What can you not fly? On? Well, you couldn't fly on a seven forty seven. Uh, How for, much more would it have to be? For, let's say if the President of the United States came in. Yeah. He couldn't fly on the 747 Air Force One, Air Force One, but he could fly on the 737. Why? Because which is a smaller, which is a smaller. And if you noticed uh, in a lot of the news stories, 
the president has been flying on the smaller Air Force One. It's still Air Force One. Because they've all got the same situation. Because they have, it takes... And he'll come out and go in the hangar and give a speech. Yeah, the same thing. Uh, because uh, the space is limited. But... Uh, what, what's the, is, is it the length of the runway? The length of the runway. So what, what's the... What's the length of the runway here? 6,200 feet. 6,200? And it was 3,300 feet. And, and so to, drive, to fly, a, to have a the 747 on it, how long does it have to be? Uh, at least 9,000, I would say, so to be safe. Yeah. Again, well, you've got you to be safe. You've got to uh, uh, have enough uh, space if you had to abort a takeoff. Now, how do you know all this stuff when you say we're going to get an airport? I mean, you, ha you're happy. you know nothing about it. Well, well no, no, right? I, mean, I did know something. About, was you in, about the planes. Was but you in the Air Force? I was in the Air Force, oh. but that had nothing to do with yeah. it. But we we have a major industry, one of our largest employers, who I won't tell because I would want them to tell it if they wanted to, and they, and they may never tell it. But as mayor told me that we'll never come to Cleveland unless we have this airport. And it was in the talking stage right then. Now, this, this industry is a big user of the airport for on-time parts deliveries. This is important. It's very important. Uh, you can hold up a whole assembly line uh, uh, manufacturing products, uh -huh. parts, when, when, when you have a, a line down. Yeah, I can imagine. So you've got to have, the, you've got to have those parts. Um, what... The, the philosophy is, and we learned it, we, we traveled to Dalton, we traveled to different places. Uh, I took one county commissioner, took, took anybody that would go, to show them what good airports meant to the community. And I even had one say, now I'll, I'll tell you that story in just a minute about, couldn't believe how far, how quick you could fly. But in a, in a manufacturing setting, if you have a plant manager, what they usually do, they fly to the airport, and instead of going to the plant and wasting all that time, plant manager and certain employees will come to the airport for a conference room and do the business. And they're on the way and going uh, to another town. Which explains the boardroom. Yeah, the boardroom is very important. Boy, yeah. And it used considerably too. But one of the selling points I had was the University of Alabama at Birmingham Air Ambulance, the little Citation Jet, would come in and bring, oh, probably two patients a day, heart patients, to Cleveland. And they had to stop because of insurance, because of the old runway, the old airport runway. So they couldn't, they couldn't do it anymore, which means that if you were, were a heart patient and you were at the local hospital, you would have to be packaged to go to the ambulance, an ambulance to Chattanooga, 30 minutes if you're lucky, and then be undone and, 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 and then repackaged, as, as they call it, yeah. repackaged to uh, the, air, the airplane going to, to Birmingham. So three or four times you'd have to be taken off life support and re and redone, and that was dangerous. Lost a lot of people. So I had one county commissioner who's who's passed away now. He said, "Well, how long does it really take you to do these things?" I said, "Well, to fly to Birmingham was 26 minutes." He said, "Oh, you can't you can't tell me that." And I said, well, to drive to Ch Cleveland to Chattanooga Airport, 30. it's 30 or 40 minutes depending on traffic. Yeah. And it's a controlled airport, which means you have to get, get space approval and all that uh, to go. And then you had to still go to, go to Birmingham. And I said, this way you can be at Birmingham without being taken off of life support. But one time. Right, yeah. And he said... He laughed at me and said, you mean to tell me you can go to Birmingham in 26 minutes? I said, yeah, maybe faster sometimes. 
He never believed that. He never believed that at all. So we, we dealt with that mentality of uh, not just uh, an airport for business purposes. And, and, you know, people would say it's for the rich man. It may be for the rich man. The rich man is providing jobs. You know, I've never known a poor man to yeah. provide a lot of jobs. No. So let the rich man enjoy the convenience of the airport and provide jobs because that's what it's all about. And that was the purpose of the airport, to provide jobs. So it wasn't was it just one reason. It was safety. There's a lot of reasons. Safety, absolutely safety. And then there was a North Lee School right by the, the old airport, you know. Yeah. And, and that was a dangerous situation. Uh, because of the short runway. Um, Jerry Lee Lewis, singer. Yeah. He has a converted DC-3. You saw the DC-3 we had last September, I believe. I know. At the, the airport. Okay. And I rode on the, I was on the first plane that landed at the New York. Yes, you were the, in the. I was on, was you on there? No, I wasn't on there, but you were there. I, I got, got your, got your picture out yeah. there. I know that. Cost me $2,000. Uh, yeah, supposed to be 1000 I took my youngest boy. Okay, that's it then. Yeah, we had our picture taken out in front of it. With all Joe standing. Stamper was there. Joe Stamper. Mm -hmm. They had our picture taken. We was all standing here, and they sent me a nice copy, and we're all, they'd moved everybody around. Well, this, this DC-3 that uh, Jerry Lee Lewis has at, at, as an entertainer, he flew into, a con he had a concert in Cleveland, flew in. For the night. Tennessee? Yes, spent the night. God, when was that? Uh, two times he came in the concert. One was in 1969, and one was uh, in the 70s, early 70s. But anyway, uh, they were at the airport, and he was talking to the news media, and uh, I was there. Sandra was there, and uh, one of the pilots, they had two pilots, he looked sort of beleaguered a little bit, and he said, Mr. Lewis, I don't want to take any of your passengers on yet. I'm just gonna, we're just going to taxi out. He said, we're a little concerned about this airport. So we're going to taxi out a minute and take a look at it. So they did, just the two pilots. And before the passengers came on, he came back, and he said, well, we've got some things in our favor. Number one, we're low on fuel. They were going to Cincinnati, so we're lightweight. That's an advantage. And he said, and this, this airport has a little hill, a little bank on it. And said, I think we can take off and sort of catapult over it, his exact words. And if you remember, you couldn't see yeah. one, one right. side from yeah, the other yeah. side because, hey, of, because the hump, like had, had, the hump had the hump. So anyway... Uh, they got off safely, got it off okay, but I thought that was a funny observation that uh, they, they'd have a little catapult and they're low on fuel. Now, how does the, how does the airport fund itself? Well, that was another argument we had to, to prove. And what an argument we had, had to prove the public that uh, it, it wasn't taking general tax money for the airport, uh, aviation pays for itself because the fuel sales. And under federal law, the fuel tax for aviation has to be only used for aviation purposes. When we get all these grants and all the grants that came through at the beginning, that was all fuel tax money that's put into a pot nationwide that's paid for for airports and airport improvements. So if you go over there and you, fill, you, you fly a plane and you fill up there because the that they're selling them the gas. Yes, you get, you get, you want to. So somebody's bringing gas to that place all the time. Oh, yeah, you got. You, you had to figure that out. Yeah, you've got your, your trucks out there that are pumping gasoline. And, uh, you know, they're going to buy. Where do they bring it from? It's, it's Shell. Aviation fuel? It's aviation fuel, fuel yeah. It's probably, it's not coming from Dalton, it's coming from. Well, I don't know where it's coming from. It's coming from probably a lot of places, Chattanooga maybe. But they fill our, our pumps our trucks up or tanks up and then when you fly uh, you go out to the runway or to the tarmac and uh, take your fuel on that way makes it convenient you don't have to taxi to the fuel place they come to you and oh I see 
And, and so the, the guy that runs that, I forget his name. Mark, Mark Fedner. Fitzner. Uh, so he's paid by, that's all not taxpayer, that's all from aviation and fuel to sale. Well, I, I, won't, I won't say that probably some of his salary doesn't come from um, uh, city taxpayers, but uh, it's like any other business. Um, it's all in a pot. But basically, yeah. basically all of your airport money comes from I don't know fuel anybody sales. that would disagree that now that the airport's there, that it wasn't the best, one of the best things. I think happened. it is. I mean, it's it, Absolutely. And it's not been any trouble. It's not been any negative at all. Nobody, no, no, the noise doesn't bother anybody. Even, uh, you know, you and I were out there one day when a pretty big jet came in and didn't hear a thing in the world. Everybody was happy. when Everybody's happy. No problem. Yeah. I even built a hangar out there for uh, Mark Johnson, Hardy's people. Yeah. But. uh, And uh, we have a new new hangar that was a spec spec hangar. You know, you do spec building. Yeah. And. Mr. Quayle, who's a brother of Vice President Dan Quayle, uh-huh. is the guy that built that hangar. He lives in Cleveland. Oh, yeah. Yeah, spec yeah, hangar. So and it's already, already Dan Quayle. Dan Quayle's brother. The Vice President. The potato guy. Yeah, but he couldn't spell potato yeah. right. Yeah. Lives in Cleveland? Oh, uh, yes. I can't believe it. Yes. And he built What's this. What's his name? Mr. Quayle. I just can't believe it. And he. Half brother. No, a full brother, but he, he built the. Where uh, did he live at? I'm not sure, but he's here all the time. What see, him, he see him quite a bit. I'm not sure. I think he's a good, good builder of hangers. What does he look like? It's hard to describe. Nice looking man. But, uh, so Dan Quayle. But now he, he, he the, the airport authority bought the hangar from him now back at up. a good price. Now back up. And, and now it's back, all, it's now in. Back up. For it's, the layman mm-hmm. like me, when you say the airport authority, the, the generally governing body of the airport, five members. I'm one of them. Yeah, and I'm vice deems, chairman. Who deems that? They're appointed by the city council. All right, so the city council says we're going to appoint a five five member an airport authority. Mm-hmm. And so they port. So when you hear on the news the plane crash and the well, we're not going to hear a plane crash. crash. Yeah, we're not going to hear that. But if you did, they say I always say that the airplane authority is looking into. No, that's uh, the FAA. Okay, that's different. Yeah, that, that's, different. that's different. They would look in every. All y'all are is. Just run the airport. Yeah. Try to make money. So if I, I go, I ride my bicycle. And, and you use the waiting room. And I'll you, go you, into you, the waiting you know, room. I'll sometimes the pick the. And, I'll go get and sometimes get the candy bar. That's or, right. That's or, and I'll, I'll drink a cup mm-hmm. there and I'll. And you don't spend a dime. Grab a bottle of water when I leave. But somebody, somebody might be a might be building uh, a building for you that uh, has been attracted to the airport. But who's paying for that bottle of water? I guess the, somebody buying the gas. That's now, according to Alan Jones, and I'm sure he's right, Marco Rubio was at that airport. He was at the airport. Two or three yes, different Yes, he refueled times. at that. And I also happened to. Donald Trump Jr. was at that airport. I was there when Why? he was. I was there. When, he was there one time when he was there. What, what, describe that. Well, they set up the little motorcade. He was going out to that place. Nobody knows about. Yeah, nobody knows about. Yeah. Um, Alan's so, house. So, so we're, we're, and and where they could, you at? see. I, I was. I heard he's coming in. I just want to go out there. So I just went out there. Where were and you sitting? I wasn't sitting anywhere. I was just walking around. There, the there's about five car, four or five cars that made up his, his little convoy, and uh, they were parked at the airport. No. And uh, So you were there when he was leaving? There when he was, when he was leaving, flying in to go to Creek Ridge. But now he was running late, so I didn't stay for him to be there. Uh, but I saw him getting ready. The Secret Service was there, of course. You didn't and stay to see? No, I had things to do. But uh, Secret Service was wondering who I was. I was mayor at the time. So the Secret and, Service. And uh, the city police were there. They knew who I was. So. Chattanooga City, Chattanooga no, city no, Service? No, no, no. Well, 
they were from, from a lot of places. Now, why would they watch him? Just because Cause he's, he's, a, he's a, a member of the president's family. Immediate family? Mm -hmm. If your cousin didn't count. No, I don't think that counts. But immediate family uh, gets the protection. So you didn't see him? No, I didn't see him. I saw pictures yeah. after he left. Is he tall? Oh, he's sort of tall, yeah. Taller than me. Had a little beard. Anybody's taller than you. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us. Yeah. I'm, I'm a two inches small, shorter than the average man. Two inches shorter. That's not much to me. But anyway, the airport's a great thing. I think it oh. is. I think it is. But that can't be the, the thing I remember. You know, I was on the planning committee. And you uh, did a good job. I hate to say it, you did a good I job on the planning job. commission. Did you did. You knew, you knew what you were talking about. I let everybody have their say. Mm -hmm. A lot of times there was... Uh, a lot of times you knew what they were going to say, yeah, what, what you, you know, were going to say, but you had their say. I felt like they needed to have their say. And I tried to make it quick. And I hated for you to leave the planning I commission. Did. I hated to leave, but... See, I think I got on there when I was 25. And I left when I was 53. Did Tim Henderson replace you? No, no, Tim was long gone. Oh, okay. Um, ben Barry, I think. Okay. Replaced. Tim was there when I was. Yeah, no, he was long gone. Okay. But um, but you would you would try to work things out prior to. Well, I would. You did your homework. I, I, I did. I thought that's very. I thought homework. it was important to do that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I thought. Well, Not that you swayed anybody, but you. Well, I may have. Well, you. If you did, it was very indirect. Well, I tried to be indirect. Yeah. 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 But, but it was. Uh, if I thought it was the right thing to do, I that, would. Yeah, I would try yeah. to get support yeah. for that. Or at least. Yeah. Now, was that under a small mayor? Uh, what do they call? Well, strong mayor, strong mayor, mayor small mayor. mayor. The, the the when I first went into office, the, it was the mayor and four commissioners. Each commissioner. Who is the commissioner? Kenneth. Well, Kenneth Tinsley. Let me go go back with okay. Kenneth just a minute. Uh, Steve Raderman was one. Never see you. But Kenneth Tinsley. I was I was not on the I was not in public office, and Kenneth Tinsley announced very quickly, abruptly, that he was resigning his position as Commissioner of Fire and Recreation. And the City Council of the City Commission, it was a City Commission then instead of Council, appointed me as Commissioner. Two days after this happened. Why did he? He took a job. Where at? And worked for the city. And doing what? He was a safety inspector, I believe. But that was that was okay to do that right, back yeah, then. Yeah. So he was a commissioner. Now that wasn't now each, a councilman. No, each commissioner was over like Mitchell Isle was police commissioner. I remember that. All right. Each each commissioner had had uh, one area that he was completely in charge. He did all the hiring, all the all the Firing or whatever. The buck stopped there. Yeah, buck, buck, buck stopped there. And uh, so I was appointed commissioner of fire, parks, and recreation. And I served six months. Mayor Bill Schultz was the, was the mayor. Yeah. And old Bradley Central. I remember him. Uh, but yeah, D, D, D. Frisbee. Remember D. Frisbee? D. Frisbee, yeah. How was he related to Mayor Schultz? I'm not sure. He's not sure. But anyway, I got uh, about, oh, just before time to uh, uh, get your paperwork in to run for office, Mayor Schultz came, meet, came to me at the radio station and asked me would I run for mayor. And I said, well, I hadn't thought about it. We need to pray about this a little bit and talk about it and discuss it. And he said, well, you only have about like three days to qualify get your qualification papers in. So I decided to run, and I did, and that's when I ran the first time. So I'd been commissioner for six months before I was mayor. And then uh, we, had, we had a lot of people concerned in the community 
that under the commission form of government, which was mostly unheard of at the time, there weren't many there anymore. Well, uh, was the commission form was not a common thing in Texas? No, it wasn't. It, it wasn't. was a rare thing? It was very rare, and, and you could have every commissioner and mayor could live a block from each other, you know. So the, there was the no idea, districts, no the districts. The idea was everybody wasn't represented? Right. Which I almost disagree with, but go ahead. Well, I, I did too, but I, I, I appointed uh, a charter study commission just because just, just everybody was hollering about it, to see what would uh, what what they'd come up with. Who did you appoint? I don't remember who all appointed. Uh, probably seven members. It may be more than seven. Prior to that, you were the strong mayor. I was the strong mayor. Now, what did the strong mayor do? Well, he had a vote. And the mayor today doesn't have a vote. That's yeah. pretty strong. Yeah, that's pretty strong. So anyway, the, the uh, Charter Study Commission recommended through the state a form of government which uh, the, the voters adopted. It has, it has, it has so to you, be, you, there has to be a referendum. So everybody's arguing we need to be a yeah. commission. So then there has to be a referendum. But wait a minute, you, there, everybody said, okay, we need to have a commission form. So you form a task force to study it. Mm -hmm. They recommend it. They, After they studied it, they actually recommended it. They recommended it, and then uh, it was it was put on the, the table for the legislature to, to decide if they wanted to approve this or not. Then so the, the voters, the, the voters, the voters had to approve it. So the legislator, Tennessee legislator, had to agree whether or not Cleveland could go to that point. That's right. And so they said, okay, then they had to have a referendum. Then the vote, that's right. Once, once they, they, they agreed with a, with a form of government and the form that was generally accepted across the state, uh, the legislature had to approve it on a referendum, and it was approved. And then it takes place, I think it took place maybe almost a year. Uh, that's not that chart. You want to chalk that? Yeah. So those are good ones. Yeah, have your own. So the uh, legislature uh, approved it by referendum, and then it passed, and that's the way it is now. So now there's there's two councilmen at large. Now don't be selecting. Go ahead. Two. That's Go not ahead. the one I want. I want that's that's one. No, that's not the one I want. That's one. Uh, so so now there there are two at large and five districts. You know they live in their district. And two at large can live anywhere. Did you agree with that new form? I did not. It, I, I, I see its advantages to an extent, but I'm not sure I completely agree with it. But everybody at State of Tennessee was under that form. Most of them were. Most of them were. So they, did they, generally everybody liked it? Yeah. How yeah. I don't know what kind of this is. There. <laughs> so, all right. So they voted it in. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you make the transition? Well, you're no longer because there's a big transition there. I'm gonna yes. have to chew while I eat. Yeah, go ahead. Well, transmission, transition, transition had to be established for everybody to take office at certain times. For instance, when I was elected, that's four-year terms, I got a five-year term on my second term to, to line up with a Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> I forgot to unplug the phone. So anyway, anyway, to, to get, to get um, everybody on staggered terms. And that's what it worked out. Then a city manager was, was hired. We've had... Uh, How long was it before the city manager was hired after it became, the city became commission, no, uh, council base? Probably 90... I think 94 is when George Wood was 
point. Yeah, so, I remember it. Yeah. yeah. When I remember. I remember when Cleveland was going through that, and Cleveland actually really did want to go to that new point. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. No, the, the majority of the people. Yeah, they wanted it. Well, in fact, in fact, uh, <laughs> those are pretty good. They are good. Um, I said at the time, I was trying to appear fairly neutral. But I said, it's another form of bureaucracy between the elected people we elect when you hire somebody. Oh, I see. Follow so that? The yeah, so, so the commission based, you could go to the commission. Council based, you had to go to somebody before. You, so it was another level mm -hmm. of bureaucracy. Not good or bad, but at another level. Right? And it can be changed. Is anybody still <clears throat> under the commissioner? I don't know of any. There are probably some, but I don't I don't know. I mean it'd be hard to change that. Anyway. And maybe it doesn't need to be. Then on to some of them the mayor is elected with a council and and the mayor, this is where your strong mayor comes in. Your mayor is the boss. Your mayor hires has the police a chief. Has, well, he like, has, a, like you has a police chief and all like that. Now, right now, the mayor doesn't have a vote, but he has veto power. <clears throat> As you know, appoints um, certain bodies like the Planning Commission, the Cleveland Housing Authority, uh, Shade Tree Board, yep. and the council doesn't make those appointments. That's strictly for the mayor. So the Point. mayor makes those appointments, but the city <clears throat> council votes on how everything no they they just go with the city they have to go with the city charter they don't change they can't change so the city manager oversees all of that and and of course the the uh the the thinking behind the change was that uh if 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 you're if i'm fire fire commissioner or police commissioner a recreation commissioner, and I'm hiring somebody. I may be hiring some good old boys. Sure. And it's supposed to take a level. level and um, nobody's watching that commissioner. The buck stops there. So there's nobody over him. You follow me? Well, yeah, so, there, there's. Well, you I mean, mean on the commissioner form? Commission form. form. Yeah, commission form. Yeah, he can do what he wants to. He can to. do what he wants to. Mm -hmm. So I can see an advantage to both of to all to both of them. Yeah. I mean, I could argue both of them. You could hire a firefighter because he's a good ball player. Yeah. You know, or a good ball and that may have happened. Yeah. yeah. Time or two. Sure. Yeah. In fact, I, I guess it did. You had to. Yeah. And you may have hired a policeman. You had to be a fireman. You had to. You had to be a good football player at Brad. Yeah. Right? Well, and then the, a policeman. You might hire a policeman because. Uh, He's just a good old boy, and he can't keep a job. That's right. So, so there, that's I could. But fortunately, that. I think that we were lucky. I think during the the form of our commission, form of government, I think that everybody did a good job and and were, were hired well. And that. I don't think the system was abused. No, and I think no, not at all. Yeah, now, is there another form? There's probably multi forms. There's, there's the strong mayor form with the council, um, like the mayor of uh, Dallas. Dallas, Texas is the same. He's got a city manager, so it's the same form yeah. we've got. Uh, mayor of Roanoke, Virginia, same same form of government we have. So some of the bigger cities still have the weak mayor form of government. If you want to, I, I probably can't imagine how many various forms they are I mean but they have to be approved by the state and uh, and again everyone has to be voted on by the people so you got so it's it's if you don't like it it's our fault it's our whatever. fault but I could argue either way and yeah. I don't believe there's any city council or city commission that could give everything it's full attention, part time. So that's where the city manager yeah, yeah. comes in. I mean, he's the manager. 
Well, Otherwise, you don't have well, it. and then on your 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 commission form, uh, if it's budget time, you don't want you want everything you want for our department, my department. Yeah, yeah. You you don't realize well, there's other needs too from the other departments, so that makes a difference. That makes a big difference. Well, let me ask you this, Tom. <clears throat> What's the worst thing? Yet? We said the best thing you think was the probably the, the probably the public would say a lot of a lot of things are bad, but uh, uh, I don't know of any. I, I tried to. Like I said, I tried to say. If you were you were mayor, how long? Twenty-seven years. Twenty-seven years. Twenty-eight almost by the time I was Did commissioner. Did it seem like a long time or a short time? Like a short time. Like yesterday. Yeah. Well, I, I served on the uh, U.S. Conference of Mayors, and I had the opportunity, uh, as as, you, as mayor, to be among sometimes. But you won as a strong mayor. Yeah. And raised your hand, raised your hand, mm -hmm. and decided to be a weak mayor. Yeah, I didn't decide that. The, the voters yeah, decided. But you were okay with that. Yeah, but I but I, I got to do a lot of things that I that I've never thought I'd do. I in the I have had the run of the mill the run of the White House uh, on occasions, and uh, got to do a lot of things that I wouldn't could never imagine that I've done that I would have done otherwise by were, being mayor. Were you ready after you had been? You know, you say you. You, you ran as mayor and almost as a well, governor, accident. Governor McWhir McWhirter, McWhirter, if you remember, he McWhirter, said, I remember McWhirter. Democrat. Yeah, Democrat. He said, give me a, a glass of milk and a vanilla ma a wafer, uh -huh. and I'm ready to go to work. That's the way I felt. I was ready to go. Because being in the news business, I knew, I knew how it worked. I knew how the system worked. But, but you were mayor for two years. You say, okay, I'm gonna sell WCOE. What are you gonna do for a living? Because the mayor doesn't. Well, you're gonna have to, no. The mayor doesn't make that much money. Make any. You you gotta save us. Well, you got So in other words, you could afford it. Yeah, I could afford it. Yeah. And I was, was, I, was glad, I was glad I could. Yeah. Um, and some can't. Like some of your 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 sessions courts, not anymore, but in years ago, in some of the smaller smaller counties. Didn't have to be an attorney. Mm -hmm. We had one who ran a service station and did a lot of the court work at the service station. A good guy. You but, know, I almost, I almost think that you could argue that that is better. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, because you're 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 right there with the people. You're right there with the people. Right there with the people. Otherwise. You know, I, I could make that argument that the guy at the gas station fixing the tire and punching that mm -hmm. thing in it, but but he wouldn't know more about the law, but he would know more about what's right. That makes a difference. So which do you go with? Well, if he if he knew what was right and did what he thought was right, uh, the the law would prevail because there would be a higher court that would reverse the decision or in whatever. Theory. Yeah, in theory. Yeah. So, yeah, this, this checks and balances to everything. Do you think that over the years when you became mayor versus now, that the general thinking of people is different? Or yeah, we've grown. Yeah, we've grown. Uh, more metropolitan. And, uh, you know, 30 years ago, you knew everybody, and you were more personable. Thirty it, it, years it, ago, you read the newspaper, mm -hmm. and it would say around town. That's right. That was a big, 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 big deal. deal. Mm -hmm. uh, they would announce the baseball mm -hmm. little league score, and now the, they and probably, the and the births, uh, the births, yeah. And so now we're just more metropolitan. Now, I always, I know the liquor license got passed, and I even built one of the, the liquor stores. I thought, anti-liquor store. But, but you could argue, is progress, you know, the race to see who can get 
200,000 people? Or is the well, or 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 are we would we rather be in Athens or, or in Etowah where well, they don't well, have? Well, well there's not a race for two hundred thousand people, uh, but but there's a race for population because the census is extremely important. Why is that? Now, it's, that's it's where a, I get confused. Okay, it, it's say, important. Say you live in Etowah, Tennessee, and you got one grocery store and a McDonald's, and you're you're, you're twenty minutes from. Well, I don't know what the what the formula is, but just guessing for every person who who is a citizen of, of the city of Cleveland, there will probably come uh, grants worth oh, a few thousand people to each one. That's the way the grants are. The grants are based on population. Grants from who? The state? From, from the state and the federal government. And what do you do with it? Well, if you get a grant, if you get a grant to uh, build a ball field, it's based on population. Sometimes you won't get a grant. So, so if you're in Etowah, and I'm just using Etowah because we're both familiar with it, but it's a small town. Yes. And uh, they don't have a greenway, I guess. No. And they don't have... Don't need a, it, just walk down the side. Don't, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. So... I could all, almost argue that progress and growth is it negative? Well, it would be not negative if it meant you were bringing merchants in to provide services you couldn't otherwise have, such as such as your grocery stores. But, but they, and, but got grocery stores. Well, but they don't have as many. And so, so, so we won't. Maybe, maybe, so we won't. Maybe merchants uh, for the, by clothing, things of that nature. All right, so say I'm in Etowah. And again, I'm just bringing up Etowah because you're living there and you've only got that one. And you want to go to Petco. You can't. You, you got to You got to go to Cleveland. 30 minutes to mm -hmm. Cleveland down. Lamontville yeah. 500 or whatever mm -hmm. they call it. They, everybody flies down that road town and get a ticket in Calhoun uh -huh. and get a ticket or, in Charleston. Or we need to go to Home and Depot then, or Lowe's yeah. to, buy, to buy a product. So, but here's my point. 20 years ago, yes, we want a Petco in Etowah so we bring more people here so we get a Petco in Etowah. But now, here in 2019, we don't need a pet code. They'll just bring it on Amazon. Well, when you, that's true, too. That's happening. So, so now... Well, here, here's gonna, another thing. You look at Home Depot and Lowe's, you had Cleveland Plywood. Great people. Great people. Doing... The best. Doing, the best. Yeah, best yeah. Providing a better service than the anybody. The best there is. Yeah. So we had we had those 40 years ago. Yeah. Your Cleveland plywood. So what is the progress? You see what I'm saying? Or is it a challenge to get less? Are we going the opposite Well, direction? it depends on whether you want the metropolitan area or whether you want to to, to live in, in the smaller living, easier living. And, and I sort of agree that it's nice. You've got everything you need. An Applebee's, a Longhorn. A... Mm -hmm. But I, I could... I remember the Rebel Drive-In was fine with me Rebel, yeah. years ago. Yeah, a lot of burger. A lot of burger. burger. Yeah, yeah. I have, what was that? L-O-T-T-A burger? Yeah, lopped a burger. Lopped a burger. But you, you do. Can you go to the Rebel now and get a lot of burger? You can, but I don't know if it's just like it was. It had no. something different. But, but you had a restaurant to go to. Yeah. You had, you had the, remember the, the old fort, the big old fort? Where the where Garden Plaza is now? Yeah. Find a restaurant as you'd want. Before that, it was what the smorgasbord. Smorgasbord, and you had. Uh, and then it was the old four, right? Well, then you had the pizza place too. Gondolier, not the. No Gondolier. one Gondolier. It was. Godfather. Godfather. Thank the yeah. gangster. It wasn't Goulart. Goulart. No, no, no. So I don't know what the progress. Just I, depends on what you want. I, I don't. I don't know. Now, of course, jobs, 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 uh, 
and, and I really can't say that creating a thousand jobs would necessarily mean you had to live right here because if you had the jobs, they would come to it if they had to drive 50 miles. Good point. So it's just hard. I don't know the answer. And we probably never will. We probably never will. Mm. But I do know places like Whirlpool. But, but, you, but you, want, you want progress because you want people to build. Yeah, and I do know this. I do know that if Whirlpool was not here, and if Vodka was not here, Um, Bakker, Bradley County. Yeah, Bakker. Mm -hmm. If if uh, if Whirlpool was not here, and if Bakker was not here, it'd be different. It'd be different, and and so I know that. And there wouldn't be a need for certain services, or yeah. So I don't know. All I know is, I guess moving forward is better, but there could be a time when people will say. And we'll move to Edelman. Well, you're you're in the building business. Look right now, people are wanting smaller lots. Smaller lots. Uh, and you, smaller houses. Yeah, used to you wanted the biggest place oh, you can mow. They wanted uh, an acre. Uh, I remember mm -hmm. the, the thing. Was, and an it's acre. Over an acre. It's got to be over an acre. Over an yeah. acre, man. Yeah. And they wanted a bonus room. Old, always had to have a bonus what is, room. What's the bonus mean? Like just, a, just an extra room. It, yeah, accidentally extra room. found a room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who had the bonus? Maybe to cook on it. Yeah, times have changed. But um, but very know. few people, I would say, and you and you, you know more than I do, are looking for big lots and big houses. Yeah, they say the pendulum swings the other way, and my belief is that the next thing that people are going to is they're going to want to be 15 minutes out of Cleveland, a little more spread out in a smaller house. I think they're going to take the idea of a smaller house and the idea of a bigger lot mm -hmm. and combine those two. Okay. Because a 15 minute commute to Cleveland is not that big a deal. And if they can go, you know, Riceville or Etowah or Dayton. Well, as, as you watch how people uh, change around, you find people want a garden? I find that people want a small garden. Yeah, a right. Not, garden. Not, not a farm. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. a farm, but yeah. rather tomatoes and a few things like that. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that uh, everything is going small. But I find more people now have got their little tillers than they used to have. Yeah, it, it's almost combining exercise with productivity when you when you farm. It's good philosophy. Yeah. They say that if a farmer does a real good job, he's outstanding in his field. Sure, <laughs> That's very good. So, Tom, let me ask you this: um, Why did you? I'm not going to chew this one until we get through. Because why, why no, did, why did you retire? As, as mayor because you could have kept going. Well, I probably could have kept going and I had people encourage me to keep going, but there's always a time to leave and ask new people to take a leadership role. Did you want to leave on a good note? Oh, sure. I didn't want to be defeated. Well, you weren't going to be defeated. Well, who knows? That's the chance you have to take. Yeah. Somebody may say, I'm getting tired of you. Enough is enough. Yeah. So, so you decided it's time? But yeah, but in, I, I, I'm staying involved. I'm on the uh, I'm uh, treasurer of the museum center at Five Points, uh, vice chairman of the airport authority, and I'm still staying busy. Now, now we talk about the massive things that you've done, the, the greatest of them. The museum is another thing I created I, with the help of a lot of people. That's my idea. So the, the whole museum was almost like a. A red clay for downtown. Yes, Tampa, yes. I guess. Yes. One, one of my campaign promises or, or one of my campaign goals was to have a museum in Cleveland. Well, we got a museum Because in we, had, we had one in Athens, the Living Historic Museum, which was in an old school building. And I, I'd admit, I, I thought when we were going to build a museum, we might have to get an old school building or somewhere. 
it's refurbishing refurbish an old building. Neither, never did I imagine there would be a complete new building. There is an absolute complete new building just for that with a parking. Mm -hmm. That's something to be proud Parking's of. important. And you can have a, a meeting there all the time of events. Parking's another thing, you know. Uh, you can go to Walmart and park, walk a lot further than you do if you park downtown. Isn't that something? People would say. People want to walk. People want to park at the, by the front door. When they go downtown. Yes. But when they go to Walmart, they're okay with. Now, yeah. why is that different? Just, just mindset. It is different though. I mean, if you map the distance between the Walmart front door and where you might or, or a mall, door, any mall, any mall, any mall, because you got to walk by the veterans, the pregnant women, the handicapped, <laughs> no. the fire lane. Now, I think I think uh, shopping is is changing now, uh, as as the mall has has evolved into more front door parking. I think that's coming back around, front door parking, and I think the malls are going out. Used to the covered the covered mall. Yeah, I I remember when the well the village mall. That that idea evolved all the way to the village to the Cleveland mall. That's right. And then it went extinct like a dinosaur. I've not been at that mall. Well, the the village years. mall was new, and it was a novelty. And to me, I like the old downtown. I'd like I I I, I wish. It was all shopping downtown again. But if there's not shopping anywhere, because everything's done online, then what can go downstairs, up and downtown, except for some small... See, I, I think we're going to evolve into... There, there's no way that you're going to get me to start shopping for clothes and go to J.C. Penney and try on stuff and... And put that you, you can order it and get it and deliver it in a day. And if, if you I don't like it, you just fold it back up. And put that tab on. Mm -hmm. So there's no way they're going to get me to go stand at a, at a department store and have them think I'm stealing something. I'll just stay home. Well, obviously, with you, yeah, they, they, they would yeah, think yeah. that. Yeah, they look at the look. Yeah, they would think yeah, that. Yeah. So, but if, so what can go downtown? It's got to be stuff that you can't buy online, such as a small service, mm -hmm. an entertainment, or a restaurant. Well, I made a statement one time that you couldn't even buy aspirin downtown. Yeah, I can't buy aspirin. And <clears throat> Cook's Food Store was downtown. You could buy aspirin then. Yeah. Then they evolved out of the downtown area. But uh, if you remember, a little satellite drugstore opened up. They were, they were uh, maybe 20 years ago, and to fill prescriptions, they would have a runner. They'd, they'd bring them, and when you, got, they, and when you got off work, your prescription would be filled and ready to go, but turned out people were ready to just drive to the drugstore and get it and not have to worry about driving or walking another block or two to find your product. Now but we, you could get an aspirin. Now, we all want downtown to be like a Norman Rockwell painting. But what has got to happen to get people to go down there? You've got to have services people want. You've got to have something somebody wants. You've got to have desire. Such as food. Mm -hmm. Entertainment. And entertainment. That's it. There's nothing. Who wants to go downtown and get their tops No. I mean, you know, so it's got to be fun. It's got to be food or entertainment. Or entertainment. I agree. And so, if you want to do food and you're going to cook, you've got to get over the hurdle of the building inspection thing, and they're not going to let you cook in there. And you and you've got to have food that uh, it's a little different. That somebody. Yeah, you can't wants. like gardeners. They do good. Mm -hmm. I bet that's a struggle for them to. Well, all of our, you know, all of our downtown restaurants are unique. They're all unique. You have to be unique. Mm -hmm. There's just a niche niche that uh, you have to cover. 
if if you were the if you were trying to revitalize downtown Cleveland and money was no object, what would you? Well, the first thing I do, I would do was to take the uh, would be to support the woolen mill because I've seen this type thing in other cities uh, and old old mills that I, I think I think people look at the ambiance I guess uh, of uh, nostalgia nostalgia they like nostalgia and I think that is nostalgia and unique and, and unique. And and fills a void. Now th th this this would would take a lot of downtown traffic, a lot of downtown uh, merchant merchants and merchandising in a in a small place. It, it's consolidated rather than up one street and another street. Well, another thing to it, it's sort of like the mall, but I think it's different because it is nostalgia. You would enjoy just the trip. If you go to the mall and you've got to park the ways away and, you know, all that stuff, you're just trying to get inside the store. Mm -hmm. And if you went down there, what you're saying is you would enjoy walking to the store. Uh, Therefore, yeah, I'm going to go. yeah, I enjoy looking at um, the stuff on the side of the yeah, road. Yeah, yeah. It makes a big difference. To get people there. Mm -hmm. So if, the, like the woolen mill, see, to me, that's the place, if it was upgraded, would be bringing everybody across in the street, which they that, really that, didn't that, done. No, and that would be the way to, way to really revitalize, revitalize. And there revitalize. we again, got the, got the yeah. COVID again. Yeah, revitalize. To, to downtown, yeah, yeah, to make it happen again. But but now, uh, when you say, how would, how could the Cleveland help them? I know they're supposed to put up the parking would the be parking lot, very I important. All that. Yeah, I got the grant for that before I went out of office. Oh, for the for a parking lot for mm -hmm. the center. No, well, it's for a parking parking ride. Oh, parking, yeah, it, to it, go to Chattanooga. Yeah, now, was, that would bring some people down. That would. That does two purposes. That would help you park and ride and save gasoline and would also have a paid parking lot to make it attractive for the That's right. people to come. Because there's no parking down there. In fact, when you go down there now, you say, hey, go Nobody down wants there. to park on the gravel and the, the mud gravel. and everything. There's yeah. a mud puddle and mm -hmm. it just... Uh, um. And Dr. Coleman has invested a lot of money to make it happen. He's done a really good job. But, but he can't do it by himself. So you're... Uh, of course, we can't give him money, but, but you could... But, well, with that parking lot, when did you get that approved? Been, what, three years ago? Three years ago? Three years ago. A grant? Mm-hmm. What, what, what's the problem? Well... I think the problem is that uh, there's there's some people probably that uh, had another recommendation or two to make for a parking lot, and I think the grant and don't hold me to this. I think the grant actually ran out, but it was re revisited and and redone, reapproved. But I think some people were talking about other places to park, which just doesn't just didn't make sense. It, don't make sense. it was just a place to park, but this is a place to do business and park. Yeah. Same thing. This was this was a perfect match, and free. Yes, and, and what what Dr. Coleman's trying to do. I know one thing. Whatever he's trying to do, he studied it. He has he's looked at hard, it. He's that kind of a guy. And living downtown is is becoming a thing too. Uh, and that happened at the Willard Mill, I guess, before any other places we had downtown. It really did. Mm -hmm. If people can live downtown and not necessarily work downtown, but play downtown and eat downtown mm -hmm. after hours and weekends, yeah, it, it's a good match. Well, I don't want to go anywhere downtown because I feel like I don't have anywhere to park. And so that would help. That grand well, I'm going to disagree with you. I've never found a place All that I, could, I couldn't park within a block. Well, yeah, but what I'm thinking is, 
Uh, and I don't care. I'm not. I'm not trying to plot, park at the front door. If I can park a block away, my gosh, you go to Chattanooga and try to park. Oh yeah, you, you can, can go five or six blocks. That's asking too much. Mm -hmm. But what we need downtown is places to go of an evening to eat or to entertain. Or noontime to eat. And too. the only place to do that is through restaurants. And they can't, you know, there's a lot of rules about re revitalizing. Yes. I mean, you know, that, there again, that's my business. It's just, it's just, you just almost can't do it. It's just almost. Because of all the rule, fire rules and stuff like that. Yeah, because nothing was ever built just for a restaurant. No, so. if something burned, it could burn the whole, mm -hmm. you know, thing down. But wiring has to be changed, and, and not just your regular wiring that you got in the building, but the wiring for the restaurant. Yeah, it makes a difference. Yeah, it's just it's almost impossible. So what are you going to do now? Now that you're retired, I'm gonna get over. I'm gonna get over, get over the COVID first. Where I'm not, you're over that. Well, I'm still dumbing up my, my words a little bit. But nobody, I had noticed. Yeah, you noticed it, Tyler. You corrected two or three. Yeah, but that was that was normal. So just enjoy life. Have coffee with you. Have coffee down at the mill. Are they closed? They're closed. I think they're. I don't think they're looking to reopen, but I think they're looking for somebody else to reopen. Now, the guy that owns that owns the pet store next door. Owns the pet store and the cattle store. And does he? Did he buy all that from? Yeah, he. I think he bought those as a condo affair from uh, Dr. Coleman. So he owns three. I believe he owns three units. Yes. I think. Then you I got you got the dance place down there, and and they pay a. Common area maintenance. I, I would guess, think so. I'm not. Like I don't really know how that works. So he's wanting somebody to buy the the mill. The no, not the mill. The coffee shop. Yeah, I wonder what he wants for. I don't know. I mean, you'd be nice. You'd be good to have yeah. that good free coffee all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's a bonus. That saved me ten dollars a day. Yeah. Do that. That's a nice place to go. It is. It's quiet, isn't it? I tell you, these coffee shops since school's back. You can't get in one certain times a day. No. I like the uh, Lassiter coffee. Uh, Lassiter's uh, Thursday, you couldn't get in it. I liked, I probably like their coffee as better as anybody. It's is so there good. any difference? Is there, yeah, any, I think there, there is, is there a difference I in coffee? I think there's a Starbucks coffee is, is, is really good. And I still go back to McDonald's. McDonald's, it, it depends on... If they've made it fresh or not. Well, yeah, but, but, but their volume, it's going to be fresh. But for $3, Starbucks is perfect coffee. Now, the uh, Lassiter has a very unique taste that I really like. But it's so loud in there. Yeah. It's like they, if they put some rugs down or some something to dampen the sound. Well, sometimes they're just studying and they are quiet. But yeah, then, quite, yeah. But then you just never know. In the afternoon, it's. <clears throat> but Tom, are you going to? Uh, you're not going to do nothing but just retired. You're not. That's all. What do you think? Work of on the airport authority? authority and the museum. That's enough. Isn't it? Yeah, that's enough. What about the new mayor, uh, Kevin? He's doing a good job. He's doing a good job. Great job. Good friend of mine. He is. Uh, he just he he really cares. Well, you know, we got a little controversy because I endorsed him with the newspaper, but uh, that, that's that been done. Is that illegal? No, it's not illegal. It's been done over the years. Yeah, everybody yeah. endorses yeah. somebody. Everybody wants somebody's endorsement. I think somebody just got uh, a little tight under it. So when you endorsed him, he was your pick? Yes. Well, he's done a good job. Yeah, we, uh, in January, early January before... My term ran out. Uh, he came to my house. We we'd already talked about it a time or two, but we made the decision that we would um, go up and uh, fill out the application from the election commission, and that Sandra and I would endorse him and uh, be the first to sign the petition, and that's what we did. 
Now he he stepped down from the what was it? Now he's still he's still the Church of God headquarters. And he represented it. Yeah, state representative he stepped down. And he retired from that or what? He was retiring at the same time he got elected as mayor. Now why would you to me that would be a Well, there's traveling to Nashville that I guess people get tired of after so long. Could you ever see yourself running for a higher office? No. But I, I did travel to Nashville a lot. I was uh, vice chairman of the Tennessee Advisory Commission in, a, in a governmental relations. Have you hit your 70s yet? Yes. Bingo. But I, I traveled. Tra I, I, I resigned on that before I resigned as mayor because I was just getting so tired of traveling so much. But, but it's like this. If I, if I slow down building, try not to take any more jobs, I'm finishing up, and I'm seeing three or four months ahead where, hey, I'll be caught up in. There's I no get a nervous wreck. There's no catching up on yours. I get a nervous <clears throat> I get absolutely No, you can't, you can't catch up. So, so how do you deal from going from that busy <clears throat> world to nothing, doesn't it? I, I can almost, when I'm not real busy, I can almost classify myself as depressed, but I don't. So, have you gone through that from being Tom Bro and the mayor? I've I've gone through a, a point of uh, of maybe being a little bored, and and you know, uh, Colonel Corn's another example. Colonel Corn, when he retired as attorney, um, had an office at the chalet, next to the chalet, and that his philosophy was. That I had, a, I had a secretary. He went in, I think, at uh, seven or eight o'clock every morning. Worked till noon time. He wrote letters uh, of congratulations to people who made the news and things like that. He said that kept him busy. He had hours to go to. Had a place to go to. I'll never forget that. Now, wasn't there an old businessman in Cleveland that would, after he retired, he would dress up in a suit, go eat breakfast go downtown to his $200 a month apart, uh, office, walk to the post office, check his mail, go back, take it back, and go home? I don't remember that one. What I was his name? I remember uh, the gentleman who owned the um, little clothing store downtown that would, would walk with his two or three hunks of coal in a bag that he kept the, the coal furnace going on to keep it warm. And, um, That's not Eddie Carr, right? No, well, well Eddie's. Does, <laughs> but uh, when Wild River was being filmed, everybody was trying to buy nostalgia clothing. Yeah. And he had a bunch of it. It was old clothes. He didn't want to sell anything. So he just closed down the time they were filming so they wouldn't ask him to buy anything. What was that I guy? I can't think of his name. What was that guy? But I, I could see him about every day. It wasn't when, Osmond. No, it wasn't him. I, I could visualize him and picture him <laughs> so, about every day. What, what do you just go to these two meetings? I mean, May, as Mayor Brooks took office when? Uh, 2018 in September. So so by the time you would have started getting bored, you got COVID, basically. Well, yeah, after about two years yeah. of COVID. Maybe that's what gets you. That's what gets COVID, maybe. May, maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Yeah. So are you going to? I won't say I really got bored. But I, but I like to do something. I'm like you are. You gotta stay busy. Because you're gonna make money when you well, when you're I, busy. But that you you don't care about that. I've always heard a saying: uh, if you fall, fall forward. So you, know, you just got to keep moving and trying to progress. Or I don't know. It just doesn't seem to. That's just nature. Yeah. Water runs downhill. And <coughs> so, so what are you going? Are you're, you have no aspirations for running for office. No. Because you could. No, not at all. It's legal. It's legal. You would win. I don't know about that, but I've, but I've got no. That's out it, of the question. It's legal. You'd probably win, and you're not interested. I don't even want to go to the liar's table. Don't even want to go to the liar's mm. table. They have strict hours. They have strict <laughs> they hours. They do that, don't they? Seven to whatever. Ten. Yeah, and sometimes the lunch yeah, runs yeah, into yeah. it. Yeah. 
And they don't even like it. We don't even like each other. No, they don't. No, just you know, they. One of the waitress came over one day and said something about something, and somebody says, "Hey, we don't even like each other." <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom, I really appreciate. I've enjoyed you, this. I, this is really neat. I think you're you're absolutely. I was telling somebody the other day, Tom Rowan. It's one of the top five names that I've known my whole life as far as as the as the people in charge. And Well that's that's nice. I mean, you you know, from my generation, that's all we've known. So And it has been a generation. From my generation. There there are people You became in you became when? Later the, when? 1991. All right, 1991. Well, see, there are there people who were in the first grade in 1991 I'm that uh, have graduated from high school. From my generation, me being 54, Tom Rowan has always been what we felt like was, I don't know. And, and, and. The government. Yeah. Let's face it, the government. There, there are people who, who haven't known another mayor. I've not known them. Mm-hmm. People talk about the death row or mm-hmm. Schultz. Schultz. I, I didn't know none of that. All we have known is Tom Rowan with absolutely nothing bad to say. Integrity I mean, and all that. Yeah. Everything. I mean, I, everything. So I don't know what you attribute that to. but Probably a good wife that's smart. Well, <laughs> probably so. And she's Tammy's. Tammy's sister. I always forget that. Well, when when Tammy was sixteen years old, Tammy Bentley. When, Tammy, Tammy Bentley, George McCoy yeah, works with George. But Tammy McCoy. was Sandra's sixteen year old birthday present, who she thought would get a car, but instead she got a sister. So she's sixteen years yes. older. Now there's another sister, right? Pam. Pam's middle. Now where do we know? Where do I know her? From? Uh, she's retired. And uh, she's not around a lot, but you you may know her. I think I know her. Pam Johnson. But I I, I always get forget. Forget Tammy. I forget that, the, and I know Tammy real well. Yeah. But, I really, but anyway, Tom, it, just for me. Thank and you for having me. Else, we really, you're you're really a legend, and and an absolutely. Thank you, sir. It's been fun. Now I can eat my candy bar now.